Hello and welcome to this new tutorial on how to create a tower stacking game. Um, I'm showing you the output right now. So what's actually happening? Uh, every once in a while, a brick comes in flying from the left or from the right. Um, and when you click, the little penguin will jump. And if it's you don't jump in time, you'll fall off the tower and the game is over. That's it. Um, very simple game. Uh, let me show you quickly how this is done. Uh, so this is the main layout of the game. Um, it consists out of a number of layers. Uh, the background layer contains the background of the game. And the brick layer contains a number of things actually. Uh, foremost, it's the layer on which all of the bricks will be spawned. But it's also containing uh, the brown button surface bricks here. The starting brick, the white starting brick. Um, and I call it the reference brick um, and I will use it to mark the X coordinates of all of the bricks that have to move to it um, and there are two objects called spawn references and uh, to the left and to the right of the layout that's the uh, these ones here uh, they uh, segregate two instance variables uh, called side which make the difference between the left and the right ones here now, uh, the penguin has, gotten, has, has been given the physics behavior. You can see that here. Uh, this is the way that it can fall to the ground and an impulse can be given to it in order to make it jump. The reference brick has also been given the physics behavior and it's made immovable. That's because the penguin should see it as an object to fall onto. The dialog layer contains all of the objects that contain uh, that consist of the dialog. Um, and, but the HUD contains uh, all of the scores at the top here. You can see that. So here's the reference brick being set immovable. This is the penguin not being set immovable. Um, all right. Now there's a second layout. The second layout, this layout contains all of the objects that are spawned at runtime. There are five colors of bricks, um, and they've all been grouped into the bricks family as well. You can see that here. Uh, the bricks have two family behaviors. The move to behavior to make the bricks move into place, with a high maximum speed to allow for enough randomization of the speed of movement. Um, also, the set angle checkbox has been cleared to make sure that all of the bricks are moved within the correct angle. Um, furthermore, uh, the physics behavior has been added. Here, uh, the prevention of rotation has been checked to make sure the bricks are always horizontal. Uh, the rest of the settings are pretty much uh, the default settings. Um, so let's see how this is uh, done in code. Actually, there are a few sections in the code. The base functionality is this one, actually. So on tick, we just uh, update the score labels. That's it. We have two variables, score and best score. Um, and those uh, are updated every tick. Um, when the game is started, so on start of layout, uh, we just hide the dialog. Um, and then we set a number of variables. We uh, the offset is set to one. The offset is the offset uh, um, starting from uh, the zero brick. Actually, the the, the current brick we're uh, supposed to be jumping onto. Um, game over is zero, meaning it's not the game over, and the score is zero. That's it. Next, we uh, create an. Uh, probability table using the advanced random plugin. Uh, it contains five bricks, uh, so the system has an equal distribution of the five bricks, um, like this. Um, we call the function to spawn a brick, we'll come back to that later, and we check if the best score exists. Now doing that using the local storage plugin will resist an either an on item exists or an on item missing event being fired. So in case of the item exists, uh, we just get the item and we use the asynchronous functionality of construct to wait for the value to be obtained and then we just set the value. If the value is missing, on the other hand, um, we just set the best scores to zero. So if the penguin overlaps the surface, the game is over. So uh, we show the dialog accordingly and set the flag so we can stop the logic from happening when the game is over. And we show the dialog, actually, that's it. When the user taps on the screen, an impulse up 
is applied. The force of the impulse is randomized to make the game a bit, a bit more difficult um, to avoid that the user can do the input again while the penguin is in the air. We check the y velocity of the physics behavior here. It needs to be less than 10. And here is the uh, an impulse 25. It's at least 25 plus uh, something random uh, and below 10. Uh, and an angle uh, at 2270 degrees, meaning up um, at an image point uh, somewhere uh, in uh, the penguin. So that's fits for the base functionality. The core functionality is basically uh, two things. First thing is a function to spawn a brick. So first we randomize the side from which the brick is coming into. Uh, if uh, the floor of random 2 equals 0, then it's the right, else it's uh, the left side. That's it. And then we randomize the, the type of the brick by using the advanced random plugins uh, probability table. And um, finally, we pick the reference, bone reference, to the left or to the right, depending on the side uh, instance variable. And we create the brick object there at the bricks uh, uh, layer uh, at the x and y coordinate of the reference where the y coordinate is offset uh, using the offset uh, variable times the brick height um, we do also minus two to lift it a bit more up otherwise the physics behavior has the tendency to make the bricks collide with one another uh, too much in the center of the screen so the tower will fall down even though the player is playing correctly. So we do a little bit of a tweak by uh, subtracting two of uh, the Y coordinate. And we add the offset so the next time uh, the user clicks again, uh, the next brick is uh, being spawned higher up because the offset is one uh, unit higher. Um, so we pick uh, the last created brick and we set the move speed to 600 plus um, floor of random of score times 10 is what it does here. Um, the move speed is randomized, it's at least 600, and then we add something, a random score, um, a random value, but the random value depends on the score. So the, the in the beginning, the speed will be not that fast, but um, if the score continues on getting higher and higher, the speed will also increase, so to make the game a little bit more difficult. That's why the randomization keeps into account the score here. Um, and finally, we move the brick into place using the move to behavior method. Whenever the brick arrives, uh, at the move to behavior, um, uh, we have to check if the game isn't over yet. Um, if the game isn't over yet, we can just spawn another brick yeah, and add one to the score. And uh, if the score is better than the best score, we just update it and we immediately set it in the local storage plugin. Basically, that's all of the game. Uh, there's also some dialogue logic, but it's pretty simple. Show dialogue just shows you the layer and activates the, the group uh, of the button. And hiding the layer hides the layer and deactivates the group. Um, and on touch of the button, try again, we just restart the layout, that's it. So that's everything this game is about. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, please like and, su and subscribe. Um, I will leave a link to the Sera store for uh, where you can download the full template uh, of this game.